The 10 Principles of Economics serve as foundational concepts and theories that form the basis for economic analysis. It was introduced by American economist Gregory Mankiw, one of the youngest economics professor in Harvard University. These principles are applicable to both macroeconomics and microeconomics, and are crucial for understanding the behavior and interactions of individuals, firms, governments, and the global economy. So in this video, I will introduce these 10 principles with real-world examples. Number 1. People face trade-offs. This principle acknowledges that individuals and societies must make choices because resources are limited. Every decision involves trading off one option for another, and these trade-offs are central to economic thinking. Example 1. A parent deciding between working overtime to earn more money or spending more time with their children must weigh the additional income against the value of family time. Example 2. A government choosing between increasing military spending or investing in public education must consider the implications for national security versus the long-term benefits of an educated populace. Number 2. The Cost-Benefit Principle. When making decisions, individuals and firms compare the costs of different actions to their benefits. If the benefits outweigh the costs, the action is considered worthwhile. This principle is fundamental in evaluating projects, policies, and personal choices. Example 1. A business owner considering the purchase of new, more efficient machinery will compare the costs of the investment to the potential savings in production costs and increased output. Example 2. An individual deciding whether to purchase a gym membership will weigh the monthly fee against the potential health benefits and increased quality of life. Number 3. Rational behavior. Economic theory assumes that people act rationally, meaning they make decisions that maximize their utility or satisfaction, given their preferences and constraints. This doesn't mean people are always right or logical, but they generally try to make the best choices based on the information they have. Example 1. Consumers may buy raincoats when the weather forecast predicts a high chance of rain, anticipating the need for protection and acting to avoid discomfort. Example 2. Companies may choose to relocate their operations to countries with lower labor costs to maximize profits, assuming other factors like infrastructure and market access are favorable. Number 4. Incentives matter. Incentives influence behavior. People respond to the rewards and penalties in their environment, which can encourage or discourage certain actions. Example 1. A salesperson offered a commission for each product sold is incentivized to increase their sales efforts, leading to higher sales volume. Example 2. A city offering tax rebates for installing solar panels may see an increase in the adoption of renewable energy, as the financial incentive makes the investment more attractive. Number 5. Trade can make everyone better off. Voluntary trade allows individuals to specialize and exchange goods and services, leading to a more efficient allocation of resources and potentially higher overall productivity and consumption. Example 1. A country that exports wine and imports cars can enjoy a wider variety of vehicles and a higher standard of living through this exchange. Example 2. Local farmers trading produce with each other can lead to a more diverse diet and more efficient use of resources, as each farmer specializes in what they grow best. Number 6. Markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. Markets coordinate the activities of buyers and sellers, leading to efficient outcomes where resources are allocated according to consumer preferences and producer capabilities. The price mechanism in markets serves as a signal for resource allocation. Example 1. The rise of online marketplaces allows consumers to find the best prices for goods, leading to efficient allocation of resources and consumer satisfaction. Example 2. The stock market efficiently matches investors with companies seeking capital, facilitating the growth of businesses and providing returns for investors. Number 7. Governments can sometimes improve market outcomes. While markets are efficient, they can fail in certain situations, such as when there are externalities, like pollution, or public goods, like national defense. Governments can intervene to correct these market failures and improve social welfare. Example 1. The establishment of public schools provides education to all children, regardless of their parents' income, aiming to equalize opportunities. Example 2. Implementing antitrust laws prevents monopolies from forming, promoting competition and protecting consumer interests. Number 8. 
A country's standard of living depends on its production of goods and services. The ability to produce goods and services efficiently determines a country's standard of living. Technological progress, human capital, and institutions play crucial roles in enhancing a nation's productive capacity. Example 1. The industrialization and technological advancements in countries like the United States have led to high productivity and a high standard of living. Example 2. The economic growth of countries like China and India, driven by manufacturing and services, has lifted millions out of poverty and improved living standards. Number 9. Prices rise when the government prints too much money. Inflation occurs when there is too much money chasing too few goods. If the money supply grows faster than the economy's output, prices will generally rise. Example 1. The Weimar Republic in Germany experienced hyperinflation in the 1920s, leading to skyrocketing prices and economic instability. Example 2. Venezuela's recent economic crisis, in part due to excessive money printing, has resulted in severe inflation and a decline in living conditions. Number 10. Society faces shortages of goods and services. Shortages can occur when the demand for a good or service exceeds its supply at the current price level. This can be due to natural disasters, policy decisions, or changes in consumer preferences. Example 1. The shortage of affordable housing in some urban areas can result from zoning laws that restrict the construction of new housing units. Example 2. During the COVID-19 pandemic, many countries experienced shortages of personal protective equipment for healthcare workers due to increased demand and disrupted supply chains. Section 2. Importance. Understanding the 10 principles of economics is crucial for learning economics for several reasons. Number 1. Core understanding. The principles provide essential building blocks for grasping how economies function, introducing key concepts that are vital for further study and application in economics. Number 2. Critical analysis. These principles enable individuals to critically analyze and solve complex economic problems, enhancing their decision-making skills in various aspects of life and work. Number 3. Empowering decisions. With a grasp of economic principles, individuals can make more informed choices, whether in personal finance, business strategy, or public policy. Number 4. Engagement in policy. Understanding economics allows individuals to actively participate in public discourse and evaluate the implications of government policies on economic outcomes. Number 5. Personal finance. The principles offer practical guidance for managing personal finances, helping individuals make sound financial decisions, and plan for their economic future. Section 3. Summary. To sum up, Gregory Mankiw's 10 Principles of Economics is a widely used textbook in introductory economics courses. Here's a brief summary of those principles. Number 1. People face trade-offs. Number 2. The cost-benefit principle. Number 3 rational behavior. Number 4. Incentives matter. Number 5. Trade can make everyone better off. Number 6. Markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. Number 7. Governments can sometimes improve market outcomes. Number 8. A country's standard of living depends on its production of goods and services. Number 9. Prices rise when the government prints too much money. Number 10. Society faces shortages of goods and services. All right, that's all for today's topic. If you have any questions regarding this video, please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.